Hello and welcome back to A Splash of Paint. Now it's time for our regular introducing feature where we throw the creative spotlight onto an up and coming professional SAA artist. Let's take a step into the fantasy world of SAA professional artist Sharon Hurst and we'll take a look at her in action. Hello, my name is Sharon Hurst and I work in watercolour. My genre is fantasy. Now, if you cast your mind back to the 1970s, and the wonderful vinyl records that we used to buy, well, for those of you who are young enough, just think of the lovely album covers. I used to sit on my bedroom floor and just sit there and look and admire these artists. Roger Dean was one of them. He was wonderful. And I've never, ever lost that. And I've spent my whole life trying to achieve the same effects that he did with watercolours, going back to those posters that were on my bedroom wall. I loved them. So I work fantasy, watercolour, and it's just all about atmosphere and fun and excitement. You have no limits. The only limits you have are those in your imagination. So. Today, I would like to show you how to paint one of my weepy skies. I want the colour to run down the page and give you the most amazing atmospheric effect. I'm using Bockingford. It's £140. It's not heavy, true, but if you make sure that you have taped it down well with gum paper, we do not want this paper to do this, do we, when we put water on it. The important thing to remember is, as long as you're stuck down well, I haven't, I haven't soaked this paper and stretched it. This is going to be the stretch. And to be honest, if I throw any more water at this, it's going to need a snorkel. So I'm using a hake brush. Very, very nice for this kind of job. It's 45 millimetres. I don't know what that is in old money. And colours I'm going to use, here I have, Farlow Blue, Burnt Umber, and some Payne's Grey. They're ready in the palette. I want to have them there so that I can just go as soon as I have the water on the paper. Now, the important thing to remember here is I want this paper wet, very wet. Don't do this if you're sitting with a laptop easel because it's going to land up in your lap. I want to soak the paper, wet it, come at it with your brush, and just keep moving. Imagine that the first water that we're putting on the paper is going to be the drink for the paper. So therefore, we want to keep going, add water and water. To make sure that you're covering all of the paper, stand sideways and you can see where you've been. Where the water isn't shiny, you need to pop some water across that. Bockingford is a very good roughy tufty paper. It's sized very well, so I can draw on this and I can rub out. That was coat number two. Look at it, make sure that you've covered all of the paper. And I see down here I've skipped a little, so we'll just add some more down here. Look at it. Now then, we're ready now for a good coating of water across. You need to be able to see this water running down the sheet in the light. So here we go. Through here, passage right across. One last dose of water. Here we go. Straight across the paper. Keep the brush strokes going straight across, please. We want them to be horizontal because that will affect the way that the paint flows. Now, enough water on the brush to mix the paint. Those three colours are sitting nestled together. Remember them, Payne's Grey, Burnt Umber and Tharlow Turquoise. And I'm using a figure of eight here. Imagine that you are mixing meringue. I don't want it mixed too well because when I offer it up to the paper and take it across, it's going to run. Watch it, see what it does. See this, this is what I'm after. Take some more. It's a good idea to put your brush down on the gum tape rather than on the paper because then you're not going to land up with a nasty hard mark. And now come across leaving a white gap. Leave the gap, let it run. 
A little more water on my brush, thinning the paint a little more, figure of eight again. Come in underneath, and this time we're coming across here, straight through, and again, picking up a little more of the burnt umber. Come in from the side of the paper, leave a gap, and come across again. Now what you're aiming to do is to have this colour run down through the white, the clear water area. You want the water then to run into the colour so that you have these lines here. Then you're looking for this colour to run down again to the white paper and you get this lovely knock-on effect. If you want it to be much thinner, more water, thinner paint. And our final stroke we can take across here. Just imagine this could be clouds breaking on hillsides. If we turn it upside down, we can have a different effect altogether. It's good for water. If you were painting mermaids, undersea creatures, this could be water. So you can see here that when I started painting, the top of my paper was wet, much wetter, so it spread further. As I come down the paper, and gravity has pulled the water off the paper, down here we have smaller bands, much more exciting. So when you have this area and it's dry, you can now imagine that you could pull crepuscular rays through this. And to do that, you need a good old ruler and one of these magic sponges. These are fabulous. Wet them. You just want them to be damp. And do make sure that you get rid of the drips from your fingers, because trust me, if you go up to this now with wet hands, that, of course, is going to go all over my poor old painting. So I'm just going to get rid of the drips on my hands. And then with the ruler, this will give you straight edge and a soft edge. And depending on how hard you press, that's one pass, harder, it will lift the light out of the clouds and give you quite a stunning effect. Imagine we could do that again, more likely this time. Place your ruler and just lightly draw that through the clouds. And there you have two rays of light shining down from a thunder cloud straight down onto your landscape. Now here, we've turned our picture upside down. The first thing to notice, look how much paler it is. Watercolour is a blighter, isn't it? It will always, always fade out as it dries. So be bold in the first place. But here, look at that. Use your imagination. You have a castle there. Put a moon in the sky, a pathway, a few windows. You have a castle in the mist. Down here could be a forest, water and reflections. But there are the tree trunks. You can see them over this side. Three forests. Here are the canopies of the trees and a light sky. Northern lights even. It's just up to your imagination. Let me introduce you to my winter queen. You can see here that I've used exactly the same technique for the background. And all you need to do is draw your picture, use the blue masking fluid, because of course this is so lovely and thin, and mask all around the edges, and then you can paint your background. Now this one, I've done in exactly the same way. Thicker paint, you can see where I've put the brush strokes across the paper. Here are the gaps. Bring them up to the figure, and do make sure that around the edges of the figure, you just put colour there, because the only thing that makes her stand out is the colour that's against the back of her. And in some areas, I've just used the ruler and I've pulled out the rays through the clouds just to give it a little extra light. This painting is called Pause for Thought. And I wanted to show this one to you purely and simply because I've made a couple of mistakes in it. But there, you learn from mistakes just as well. As you may remember, I did say, put your paintbrush on the side of the paper before you bring it across. I didn't. Hence, this horrendous white blob here. So when this painting comes off the board, I'm going to have to trim it, aren't I, obviously? Now, the second mistake I made, I pressed too hard 
with my hake brush when I was putting the water on. So consequently, across the middle of this poor old picture, I've got some scratches in the paper where the wood of the handle has pressed a little bit too hard. But the interesting thing about this, I wanted to show her to you because I've used a much wetter background. This piece of paper did need a snorkel. And consequently, with a thinner, wetter paint, look at that. This is what you can achieve. And it's thin, it's beautiful. This is alizarin crimson with French ultramarine. And here the colours have separated and it gives you this lovely hazy purpley mauve. If you're a landscape artist, you might like to use this effect for something like this. This picture is the Stennis Stones in Orkney. Again, I've used thin paint so that it floods down the paper, but the difference here, I've done an underpainting with raw sienna. Put the colour on, painting first, allow it to dry, use a hairdryer, make sure that it is very, very dry, and then you soak the paper again and then introduce the colour, and this is the effect that you can achieve. I'm sure you'll agree with me, it's very, very effective. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed the few tips that I've been able to share with you. Please go away and have a practice. If you feel that you want to send them to me so that I can have a look, I'd love to see them. Until we next meet, my name's Sharon Hurst. Thank you very much for having me. Great techniques and use of colour there. I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot more of Sharon and her imaginative style in the very near future. Well now, before we take a short break, let's take a quick dip into the Art by Archive and catch up with popular TV artist Keith Fennick, who demonstrates a simple and effective way to create realistic bark on trees. I want to show you a simple technique for creating texture on the bark of a tree. Using a three-quarter flat, a bit of burnt sienna, and we'll just create ourselves tree structure, a bit of section of a tree, a bit of Payne's grey, a bit of burnt sienna, give us a dark brown, we'll use a rigger brush, we'll put in a few little trunks, a few branches rather, what am I talking about, a few branches like that, twigs coming out, Right, using the knife now, I want to drag that down. It's still a little bit wet, so we just need to let that dry a little bit. We'll go again. That's what I'm looking for. See that nice texture I've got on that tree trunk there? So simple, I've done that by using the wonder knife. Now, if it was a different kind of tree, I could have gone across with a knife and so on. But it's a very simple and effective way of getting texture on the bark of a tree. Let's do the section of a silver birch. Starting with a little bit of uh, raw sienna, very light coloured, just to create our section of a tree trunk. When silver birches are young, they're quite golden. It's only when they get older that they start going grey and silvery. I'm just going to use a little bit of grey on here now, in parts. Just using a bit of weak Pain's grey. I think I'll have a little bit more raw sienna on. It's a bit bland, just warm it up a little bit. Let's put our usual branches on. Now we need to dry that before I go any further. I'm going to use my Oswater brush now, the angled brush, and I'm going to just use a bit of burnt sienna, with a little bit of that Payne's grey, and I'm going to just rest it flat to the paper, and I'm going to just gently 
drag it across like that, look, to get this effect that you get from a silver birch. Now we're going to some neat Payne's grey. Gently. Drag it across there again, just to get a bit of texture like that. Move it back the other way. Some birches have lots of stripes on like this, others have very little. And then there'll be a few knot holes here and there. So I'll put one in there, one there like that, where the branches actually fall off. And I'll just ease a few more across like that, look with the rigging in my hand. Just give that a bit more definition. Paint them a little bit of light in tone. And there's our section for a silver birch. Thanks Keith, some lovely wet into wet techniques there and some great tips for painting terrific trees. Well folks, time for a final break now, but join us when we return with Malcolm Cudmore as he prepares to put the final finishing touches to a stunning life drawing in the concluding part of today's Try Your Hand At. See you soon. Thank you.